For our video, we are going to name some geometric shapes. Um, I want to make sure you know how to do these as we head into more geometry stuff coming up. The first one is, is an angle. How do you name angles? You may have like a general idea of what an angle is, but it might be hard for you to even describe an angle or define it. But um, an angle is going to be two rays with a common endpoint. You've probably talked about rays in previous math classes, but rays are going to start with an endpoint and then go off into another direction. If I draw a second ray and I use that same endpoint, then I've got an angle. I'm going to go ahead and label a couple pieces, a couple points on this angle. When you name an angle, you are going to use the symbol for an angle. It kind of looks like an L, like that. You must always use the symbol for an angle before you name it. You must also use capital letters only when you name an angle. So you have to use capital letters and you have to use the angle symbol. You will either use three letters or you might be able to use only one letter in certain instances and you could also use one number. So this is complicated because there's so many options. If I'm naming this angle that I drew, one way to name the angle is to figure out which, ang which letter is in the position of the vertex. The vertex is what we call that common endpoint. So B is the vertex. One way to name this angle is to call this angle B. Another way is to use the other two, to use three total letters and make sure that B is in the middle since it's the vertex. So I could call this angle A, B, C. Please notice we still have the angle symbol. Or I could call this angle C, B, A. But each time that vertex is listed in the middle so you want to start on an end, go to the middle, and then go out to the other end. It's kind of one way to think about this. There are times where it seems like a little labor intensive to use three letters. And so sometimes people will just put a number. You could call this, call this, also call this angle one. But notice the angle symbol is still present for all of these. Now there are times where the most straightforward way cannot be used. Calling an angle B is awesome if there's only one angle at the vertex. But there's times where you might have a more complicated drawing like this. Where if I say angle B, it's really confusing because am I talking about the whole angle B? That big one? Am I talking about this little angle B here? Am I talking about this little angle B here? It's, it's too confusing. So if there's more than one angle using B as a vertex, you will not be able to use the one letter option. You would have to use three letters instead. Or you could maybe use a number if it's not the big angle. We'll talk about that more in a minute. A segment is a portion of a line and it has two endpoints. So it has two endpoints, which is going to mean it starts and ends there and it's straight and it's part of a line. So if I draw a segment, it can be angled and turned around in all sorts of different ways. We can have a whole bunch of different letters on this segment. And by the way, each of these little dots that I'm making with a letter is a point. And I would like you to notice that um, when I'm drawing in these points, I'm using capital letters again. And so when we name segments, we're going to use some of these points and we're going to use capital letters. We are going to always use two letters when we name a segment. Even if there's more than two points listed on here, the two that we want to choose are the ones that are the endpoints. And um, you might wonder like, well, how many points could there, could we fit on this little segment? Well, you could fit as many as you want. So you may or may not name them all, but there's actually an infinite number of points here. These points don't actually have any size. They're just a little location in space. So we could have five billion points on this tiny little segment that we could squeeze in here, but we might only name two or three of them. 
Now let's say I wanted to name the segment that starts at M and ends at Q. If I want to name the segment that starts at M and ends at Q, I would name the two endpoints and draw a bar over them. Now it doesn't matter which endpoint you name first, but they have to be the endpoints. If I use MP, that's talking about something different. MP is just from here to here. I wanted the entire segment starting at M and ending at Q, so M and Q have to be the letters I use. They have to be capital letters, and we're going to draw a bar over them to show that there's two endpoints. Lines are also going to be straight, but they will not have endpoints. Lines are going to go in to infinity in two different directions. And when we name a line, there's a couple different ways. The most common way would be to use capital letters. And we're going to use two different letters. They could be any two letters that are named on the line, any two points. As I'll, Instead of writing two letters, I'll write two points just because it might help us understand a little bit better what we're doing. And then um, we're going to draw a double arrow above them. There is an alternative way to name this, and that is to, to write the word line and then write some letter in cursive, like line P. So maybe I've got a line. The way you can tell it's a line and not a segment is that you're going to see um, the arrows at the ends. If I wanted to name this line, I could pick any two letters, any two points, they need to be capital letters, and I will draw a double arrow above them. It does not matter which point comes first and which point comes second. It doesn't matter which two points you choose, and you can keep changing the order. So there's a lot of options. Now, I only named three points on this line, but there are more. There's an infinite number of points, and I could choose to name them and create more ways to name this line. There are times, this is less common, that you might see a cursive letter, an L, a P, a W, whatever, doesn't matter, next to a line. And then another way to write, to describe the sign is to write the word line and then to write a cursive lowercase letter. The last type of shape we're gonna look at right now are rays. And when we're talking about rays, these are straight, the reason they're straight is because they are portions of lines. They will have one endpoint. Unlike a segment, which has two, these will have one endpoint. And these will go to infinity in one direction. Lines go to infinity in two different directions. When we name array. We will use capital letters because we are using points. We will use two letters, but this one has a specific order where the endpoint must come first. The endpoint must be named first, and we will draw an arrow to the right above the letters. Even if the ray is not going to the right, we will draw an arrow to the right. Here's a ray. The question I have for you on this one is how many points are on this ray? To pause the video and think about that. And then I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer now. Hopefully you've thought about it. Some people might say, oh, there's only one. Well, there's one point that's been named. But there's an infinite number of points actually on this ray. We just haven't named all of them. So if I wanted to name this ray, there's quite a few options, and the more points you have, the more options you have. But you're gonna use only two points at a time. Two points only. You're always gonna start with the end point first. Since B is the end point, no matter how many options I have to name this ray, they'll always start with B. So I'll do B and then another letter on the ray. B and then another letter on the ray. You might see I'm drawing an arrow to the right. 
B and another letter on the right. The arrow is to the right. The arrow is never drawn to the left. Even though on my picture, the ray goes to the left. You will always start with the endpoint and draw the arrow to the right. Okay, so a couple examples we'll try, and then you'll have a chance to do some on your own. For number five through eight, name each shape in as many ways as possible. This is a segment. Segments would be named by the endpoints, capital letters only, and a bar over them. And it could be named in any order. For six, we're going to name this angle shown below. Since the vertex is Z and only one angle is using the vertex, the simplest way to name this angle is to use the angle symbol and call it angle Z. By the way, I draw a little line through my Z. It's the European way. It's just because my Z's look like twos otherwise. I could also use the number here that's given for this angle and title this angle six, or I could use three letters. If I use three letters, that middle letter here has to be the vertex Z, so keep that in mind. So I would start on an end and move to the vertex and then move to the other side of the, of the angle. So angle D, Z, E, or angle E, Z, E. There are three ways to name this line. You can pick any two points and draw a double arrow, and you can change the order of those two points. You can also write the word line and use a cursive lowercase letter. This ray can be named in two ways. You must start with the endpoint, and then you can pick another letter on the ray. You must start with the endpoint, and then you can name another point on that ray. The more points I had, the more ways I would have. Number nine, I want to do angle one, which is here, this angle. And this angle uses H as a vertex, but it's not the only angle that uses H as a vertex. This green angle uses H as a vertex. You're wasting this hard today, evidently. <laughs> and so does the big angle. There are three different angles that use H as the vertex. I cannot name this angle as angle H because I don't really know which angle I'm referencing. If I say angle H, you don't know if I mean the angle on the right, the small angle on the left, or the big angle. But we want to be able to specifically identify to the reader where angle one is. So I cannot call this angle H. I could call it angle one. I must still have the angle symbol. And then I could use three letters, making sure that H is the middle letter since H is the vertex. So angle G, H, J, H, G, pardon me, angle J, H, G. And then I can also switch that order, keeping H in the middle, angle G, H, J. I'm going to turn the page, and these next problems are for you to try. So please pause the video. Try these problems on, the own, on your own, and then uh, when you're ready, you can go ahead and repause and see how you did. Okay, so for these problems, here are the answers. Please pause the video as needed so that you can compare your answers with the ones on the screen.